Welcome to the citizens, officials, and guests to the 2020 Brookfield uh, Annual Town Meeting. Uh, it's hereby called to order. I declare that we have a quorum. The quorum is 30 people. We're good, Mike. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs to meet the, at Tantasqua Regional High School, 319 Brookfield Road, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, as voted by the Board of Selectmen pursuant to its authority under the Section 9, Chapter 92 of the Acts of 2020 to commence on Friday, the 26th day of June in the year 2020 at 6.30 p.m. And then, and here to act on the following articles. This was posted uh, at the town hall and at the post office on June 16th. I would ask people to uh, stand and We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, if we would, please. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Let me just start by saying welcome. Uh, this is your town, your meeting, uh, so we need to move forward. This, this is the one night that we have to get this done, so it's going to be an action-packed night. To say the least, 2020 has been an epic year, and it's only half over. Uh, COVID-19 has uh, presented a whole bunch of challenges, fears, and new ways of doing things, and this meeting is one of them. Uh, we have yet to know fully what and understand what the new normal is. Uh, I think it's appropriate that we recognize and say thank you to all of the first responders, the police, the fire, EMT, medical personnel, and to those who serve the stores and to make our lives as normal as possible. Additionally, I want to say thank you to the town employees and to the volunteers who adapted and adjusted their services to the community to make uh, things work in town. So what to expect of the town meeting? I'm going to real briefly go through what uh, was in the packet that you received. Masks are expected to be worn in here. Uh, if you prefer not to wear a mask, you're going to have to go over to the auditorium. As you approach the microphone and you speak the microphone, the school has asked us to disinfect each microphone after each speaker. So there are wipes. There's an attendant that will be here, will clean the microphone for you. If he's not there, then please do it yourself. There's wipes and a basket. Social distancing. We have set these seats out as uh, in order to comply with what we think is the, the appropriate social distancing. They're suggested uh, that this the markings remain there uh, and that those are the seats to be occupied. We already talked about the microphone. Bathroom facilities, there's one bathroom. If you go out this door, it's down the hall, there's a yellow cone in the middle of the uh, corridor. You take a left, the men and ladies room is down there. Um, and there's, there's no uh, bathroom available uh, in the balcony because it's under repair. So the only bathroom is down here. Uh, there is no food allowed in the auditory. Water is okay. Time limits. We're, we're going to get through this meeting tonight. And so we're going to make every effort in order to expedite things just as quickly as possible. The major proponent of any article will have five minutes to present the, the information. If he needs more, we will grant a little more time as necessary to be sure that you fully understand the article. The speaker will have two minutes. You can say a lot in two minutes. Uh, you're going to come up, you'll speak for two minutes, and then if you have more questions, you're going to have to go to the end of the line. 
Does everybody have a yellow voting card? We are going to vote with the yellow voting cards. It makes it easier to, for the uh, uh, tellers to see that. So in lieu of a voice vote, we'll call for a vote. Stick up your yellow card. Uh, at this time, I believe Mr. Gillis from the advisory would like to speak. Hello down there. Good evening. Thanks for attending and participating tonight. My name is Steve Gillis, and I'm uh, the chairman of the advisory, financial advisory committee. Our members are directly behind me. Um, I'll be providing an overview of the F, uh, FY21 budget process and a, a financial picture for the town. Uh, it's been a tumultuous year, and there's been many challenges and changes, some good and some not so good. Uh, I would say the most significant events this year were uh, in, in sort of in this order. Um, uh, replacing our town accountant, with Lori Barkas and the, the firm of Eric Kirchhoff uh, accounting firm. Secondly, replacing our town treasurer uh, with an interim uh, company, Sarah Hunter and Company. They've been exceptional to work with and I think the Board of Selectmen made an excellent decision with both of these. And then finally, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, its effect on the budget uh, cannot be overstated and, 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 and just sort of the process we went through. Um, it, was, it, it, was, it was quite disruptive, uh, mainly because of uncertainty. Uh, it should be stated that on May 5th, we, we were ready and we did present to the Board of Selectmen a balanced FY21 budget and two days later we were told state aid is in question, could be a cut as much as 20%, and that took us all right back to square one. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been a uh, very uh, active, shall we say, past five, eight weeks right now. Um, the town accountant and treasurer, and I'm, I'm going to take this statement and, and basically summarize a couple of the main points. The town accountant and treasurer helped us to discover and correct a series of accounting and filing errors dating as far back as 2015. Uh, this impacted our town in many, many ways. Certainly uh, one of the more significant and, and apparent ones is uh, tonight we'll, you'll see that our certified free cash stands at $21,920. Um, and that's a significant drop from years past. Um, and so also with Sarah, Laura and Sarah's help uh, and the Board of Selectmen, they really helped us out to navigate the upheaval and uncertainty of the coronavirus and the impact on state aid. And state aid is still unknown. We still don't know what it's gonna be. Uh, we were told July, then August, it's, you know, it's probably gonna be September or even October. Um, with this information, we decided to make a very conservative budget the advisory committee and and so I'd like I'm just going to read right from this book we decided to ado adopt a conservative budget that's what you're presented here and it reflects FY20 spending so we we started with a with, with a level funded FY20 budget and to the extent possible reductions of 5% or more from individual line items as proposed by the by department heads now exceptions were made and they're made on a case-by-case -case basis as advisory listened to and kids considered how these cuts would impact the services their departments would provide the town and the citizens of our town. It was quite a process and everyone was very, very cooperative. Uh, also, uh, there was no cost of living wage increase for, for all non-union employees. That was a decision that uh, advisory also put forward. Um, 
state aid might be known in September. Um, you know, our next plan is, is that, we, it, it, so we're gonna ask you to support this budget. State aid is known in September. Uh, the Board of Selectmen have already scheduled a special town meeting on October 15th. It's a Thursday, write it into your book. And at that time, um, we will know uh, state aid, chapter 70 fund, chapter 70 school funding, and we consider how these will affect the budget and the impact on property taxes. If necessary, we can make adjustments at that meeting. Finally, I just wanted to say thank you to the town employees, department heads, the school department, capital improvement planning committee, the town accountant and town treasurer and the board of selectmen uh, for their support, cooperation, and hard work this year. It's been it's been it's been quite a uh, quite a year. I'd like to next flip to page four. It's the status of town finances. I have one correction I'd like to make. Um, it's an oversight on my part, but let's just start at the top. Our stabilization fund stands at $390,661, which is 4.64% of our annual operating budget for 2020. As you go down the levy limit, debt exclusion. I failed to include the police department in there. It actually adds $153,737 to the levy limit. So the, the total levy limit is $6,043,116. You see our state aid as projected. This is nothing more than a projection on our part. Tantasco reimbursement, this is a final year from Tantasco reimbursement. Total local receipts, total available revenues, total expenses, the budget as presented, our expenditures. And then down at the bottom, the excess levy capacity. Well, th th that, that total levy limit is going to affect the excess levy capacity. So the excess levy capacity is, is not, should be $484,335. That debt exclusion is added to that number. That is a summary of our town's finance and snapshot of what we have, where we stand. Uh, I believe next we're jumping into is the, the budget itself. Roll back to you, Doug. Thanks, Steve. What does Selectman want to speak? Good evening, and I want to thank so many people for coming out tonight in these difficult times that we're having. Uh, and I have also have, as most of you know, I'm Linda Lincoln, I'm Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and I have a short little outline to read also. As outlined in the advisory committee letter to you, the town has undergone significant efforts to reconcile financial accounts dating to fiscal year 2014. The town has secured both accounting and treasury resources to continue work to address shortcomings in the coming fiscal year. Additionally, the board secured the work of an external auditor who is beginning to validate the work completed to date and make recommendations as the town moves forward. Completing the audit is the first step in securing an improved financial position. Those improvements will include identifying receivables and completing an inventory of tax title and tax liens to enable collections. Those in the later categories can expect a letter outlining the town's plans to reduce the level of receivables. Tonight's meeting opens with the, with the understanding that many are struggling under the impact of COVID-19. For example, it is understood that April's employment rate was 3.7% in Brookfield, and the most recent information has the number of 14.9%.
We're grateful for the support received by the town in this time. To close, there were two citizens' petitions provided to the board. These pe petitions are not included in the warrant as the lead petitioner agreed that the October meeting was a better time to address these. We thank the petitioners for the willingness to address the essential needs of a workable budget this evening. And then I have a couple motions to make. Um, Mr. Moderator? Yes? I would like to make a motion for Jeffrey Blake, our town council to speak, Laurie Barkas, our town accountant, uh, Karen Trainer, our administrative assistant, Ryan Pomperion, our um, highway superintendent, uh, Michael Blanchard, our chief of police, uh, and also uh, Deb Boyd, who is our Super, uh, assistant Superintendent Business Manager. So I'd like a second to that motion. You have a second. You have a second. Is that a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Test. Yep. I'm sorry. Uh, all, in, all in favor, please signify your raising your card. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And then I have another motion, Mr. Moderator. I would move to allow the moderator to declare a two-thirds vote and votes that require such by voice or hand count. I'd like a second on that. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, please signify your raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Were you going to make another announcement? No? Okay. All right. So right into the, uh, right into the budget. It's going to be, a, try something a little different, folks, to try to move this along as fast, quickly as possible. Uh, in checking with town council, I can read the, uh, each block individually uh, as a group. If when I read, for an example, under general government, lines one through 16, if you have a hold, you want a question, please say hold, and we will come back at that. The number that you, the number in the budget that you want to be looking at is the shaded area, uh, at the column that says 21, FY21 advisory committee recommendation. With that being said, General government, lines one through 16. Do I have any holes? Tell me which, which ones, please. Three. Is that it? 11. Four. So I have a hold on 3, 4, and 11. Is that it? 8. Eight. And 15. Did somebody say 15? <laughs> okay. Uh, line 18, uh, which is the reserve fund. Line 19. Legal services. Hold on 19. Lines 20 through 25. Which ones? Twenty and twenty-one. Is that it up until twenty-five? 27 through 29. Oh. Which one? Eight. I didn't hear it. 28. 28. Lines 31 through 36. Oh. Which one? 
33 and 34. And 32. And 32. Okay. Lines 38 through 42. Which ones? 38. 40. 40. Is that it? Moving on to lines 44 through 48. Hold 44. Hold 48. Line number 50. Lines 51 through 53. Which one? 52. 51, 52. 51, 52. Lines 55 and 56. Hold 55. Hold 55. Lines 58 and 59. Hold 58. Hold 58. That's the way to call it out, folks. Thank you. Line 61 to 63. Hold 61, 62. Hold 61 and 62. Hold 62. 61. Just 61? Yes. Line 65 and 66. Hold 65. Hold 65. Lines 68 through 71. Hold 68. Line 73, Print Town Report. Line 74, Municipal Heating Fuel. Line 78 through 83. I, folks, I'm going to have to take my mask off. I need to breathe or see. And right now, breathing seems to be more important. Hold, 80, 81. Hold, 80 and 81. Was there another hold? Lines 85 through 90. Hold, 85, 86. Hold, 85 and 86. Line 92, telephone contract leases. Line 93 to 95. Hold 93, 94. Hold 93, 94. Lines 97 through 99. Hold 97, 98. Hold 97 and 98. Lines 100 and 102. Hold 100 and 101. 104 and 105. Hold 104. 106 through 109. Line 111 through 113. Hold 111 and 112. 115 and 116. Line 118, three warden expenses. Line 119, shade tree expenses. Line 21 through 25. I like the questions about 25, please. 125? Hold 125. Lines 127 through 139. Which, which one? 127, 128, 129, 130. That's 127, 128, 129, and 130. Any others? Yes. Lines 141 and 142. Line 144. Line 145 through 148. Hold 145, 146. 
hold 145 or 146. Health and Sanitation 151 through 157. Hold 151, 152, 153. Uh, lines 159 through 161. Hold 159. Hold 159. Lines 164 through 167. Lines 169 through 172. I'm sorry? I still didn't hear it. 170. 170. Okay. 172. 172, a hold. Uh, cultural and recreation lines 175 through 181. Hold 175, 176, 177. Okay, I think I skipped line 174. That's a standalone item. No, I'm sorry, that's a roll up. So, uh, line 183 and 184. Line 186. Line 187. Line 188. Lines 190 to 193. Lines 95 through 99. Lines 202 through 207. Hold 203, hold 204. 202, 203, 204. Is that it? 205. 205. Okay. The last two, 210 and 211, I don't read because those are in articles. So I'm going to go through and read the ones that are on hold. If I missed any, please speak out. Line three. I move that the town raise and appropriate such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of the town for, for the ensuring year as shown in fiscal year 21 budget. Advisory committee recommends as contained in the voting warrant. Second. We have a motion has been made and seconded. Second. All in favor, please signify by raising your voting card. So on the salary lines that have been held, is there a motion to be made on that? I move it. I move it. Please come to the microphone, please. State your name and address, please. Bruce Clark, uh, Rice Corner Road. I motion that we raise all salaries as uh, highlighted here by 2%. All those salaries so all the, that were held. All the ones that were on hold, salaries by 2%. Okay. 
Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Would you like to see some paper? Okay. The recommendation is to identify those lines so that we know. So we'll just go through and see, see which ones they are. You want me to stand up here and identify, or you want me to just collaborate with what you have? Just read what line item. Line item three. Four, 28. If I missed one, please call out because I'm reading up what I checked off, not necessarily what you questioned. All right, Don, we're yep. getting a little confused. I only checked off what I questioned. Right. So that there's other people that want to chime in on this. Only the ones that you are making your motion on. All right, hang on. So you said three, three four, 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 28, 32, 33, 34, 40, 44. 38, did you want 38? No. 40. 40, 44, 48. 51, 52, 55, 6, 58, 61, 65, 68, 80, 81, 85, 86, 93, 94, 97, 98, 100, 101, 104, 111, 112, 125, it's a question by me, it's not, it's not in this, so I'll pull that one aside for now. 127, 128, 129, 130. 145, 146. 151, 152, 153, 159, 170, 172, 175, 176, 177, 202, 203, 204, 205. I do have a secondary comment on 202. Okay, those are the items that you are if, in if, your motion. If you would, if you would just remove from the two percent, two o two, and one twenty five, remove those from the two percent column, and then I'll just two o two and one twenty five. Correct. Those are just questions I have. All right, 125 was, was in your list. It was. Well, it's not a salary. Right, that's correct. Are you all set, Mike? Yes, sir. So a motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? I have discussion. Is this a discussion on the motion? Yeah. I'm sorry? The motion's been seconded. Motion was made and seconded. Uh, yes. Can I just explain why I, I'm asking for this? Yes. I've been, 
I'm retired now from the town of Brookfield. Been an employee here since 1978 until three years ago. If you don't stand up here and fight for your rights for a pay raise, very, very seldom, it did happen last year by our Board of Selectmen, very seldom do our employees get a pay raise unless they stand up here and ask for it. Very demeaning, demoralizing way of having to do things, but that's government. Any one of our town employees during this pandemic could have opted out, took the Family Leave Act. We'd be paying more money in unemployment insurance than we'd ever think of paying in this cost of living raise. This cost of living 2% is, I can give you, it's around seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars That's what it amounts to. If they took the Family Leave Act, would actually have to replace the seat they sit in with somebody. We paying that bill too. I think these people deserve the 2% for doing a good job during a situation which is horrible. That's why I'm up here today. I thank you. Bruce, would you just wipe the microphone down, please? There's a wipe right there. Sure. Motion has been made and second. Yes, Laurie. Uh, Laurie Barkas, town accountant. Just a point of clarity, line 33 is the assessor certification stipend, it is not wages. Line 172 is the veterans casework. That's the veterans benefits paid to the townspeople. That's also not wages. They're not eligible for COLA increases. Which, which lines were those? But there's another question. 33 and 172. 33 and 172. 33 is remove. And 172. is a remove from that motion. I would like to leave the hold on 33 for future discussion steps. Okay. How about who made the motion on 172? Was, was that Bruce? It was my motion. Would you like me to adjust my motion or would you accept that what I just said you remove those two? Would you remove those in your motion? Those, those two? Well, we need to leave one because it's still a hold on 33. That's, that's not separate, that's not two. Right. But 33 and 172, the motion has been to remove those. Okay. Uh, I'm Tom Regan with the advisory board. I'd like to speak to the COLA. Um, we discussed giving the employees a cost of living raise. And from our point of view, the concern was one, the imp was primarily impact to the taxpayers of Brookfield. Um, I know people who've had their pay cut and work in the same hours. I know people who've had their hours cut. I know people who've lost their jobs. With the budget that we have this year, revenue is down and expenses are up. And I, in my reading of the budgets is that cost of living raises have been given out in fiscal year 18, fiscal year 19, and fiscal year 20. It is now fiscal year 21. I would love for the town to be in a position to give cost of living raises to the employees. I feel they deserve it. But in my opinion, uh, speaking for myself, I do not feel that it is an appropriate use of the taxpayer's money to give out raises when so many people in the town are going to be having financial trouble. Thank you. Mr. Snyder. Uh, Steve Gillis with advisory. <clears throat> um, 
not once are we questioning uh, the dedication or whether or not people are doing a good job. We think people in this town are doing a very good job. I just want to make clear, um, <clears throat> we knew we were headed into an abyss here and a place we didn't know. Uh, we met twice with department heads. <laughs> that in and of itself is, is a, uh, uh, a precedent, okay? We met twice, twice with department heads and, and anybody else who would join in to discuss budget cuts. Uh, we were forthright with an upfront explanation, uh, up explanation. We said there will be no colas this year. Um, we had face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact with everyone who was there over, over Zoom, if you will, and um, explained our position. Um, this has to do with uncertainty with, with state aid. State tax revenue is, is, is abysmal, and um, our own local tax revenue, uh, uh, although it seems to be moving along, we really don't know what it's going to be in the future. We are, we're, we're, we're looking to meet in October with much clearer information. Uh, and even at that point, we're making no guarantees with COLA. That was the position of uh, advisory, and it's one that we made very clear and very respectfully. Mr. Moderator. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll do that. Mr. Snyder. Right. Mr. Snyder from um, Board of Selectmen. I'm speaking for myself. We established the October 15th town meeting to come back together to see what we, we, we can do, not only for the, the budget lines, but also the motions that we've tried to uh, condense what we're talking about tonight. Uh, again, I totally respect Bruce's motion. At the same time, the whole idea of October 15th was that we would understand state aid at that time and that we have a Collins report that we haven't dealt with yet. And, and we also have just the whole idea of a COLA. And so again, it was not for tonight. We wanted to maintain staff and that was the key ingredient of, of what we were proposing at that time. So again, I totally respect Bruce's point, but at the same time, I think it's set for October. We've, we have two other contracts with both the police chief and police that we have to address as well, and we, we should do it holistically rather than just a one-off per the budget lines. That's, that's my feeling. Thank you. Uh, Bruce, uh, somebody had their hand up before you. I'm sorry. You can stand right in line. Hi, I'm James Cook, Race Corner Road. I just have a question to the advisory board of town council. How much money is this COLA going to count to, and what's the impact on the tax rate and the levy limit? Say it again, I didn't hear that. It's hard to hear things up here. Yeah, I know. How much money are we talking about in terms of COLA, and what's the impact on the levy limit and the tax rate? That's all. Mr. Cook, just, just wipe the phone down, the microphone down, yeah. if you would, please. It's right there. Yep. Cola is, is just about seventeen thousand dollars. That's what we're talking. About. And the reason we're here tonight is after reading the warrant book, and throughout my years with this town of being a non-contractual employee, it sounds pretty bad. It reads pretty bad when you read it. The people that will not get a cola are the people that are not contractual. That's what the book says. That's why somebody needs to stand up here tonight to represent the people that are not contractual. And I think if we wait till October, uh, why put it off the, when you can do it today? We have $400,000 in the limit, as the levy limit. I think we're raising appropriate the $18,000 to cover this 2%. Mr. Gillis. Uh, to answer um, the question, um, be about 10 cents. 
on the on the uh, tax rate to to provide the uh, cola uh, that's being described here. Okay, uh, it should be known that we're already looking at a tax increase. Um, we, we have forecasted anywhere between 50 cents to uh, upwards of two dollars. But the, the the budget that we're looking at right now is 50 to 55 cents plus or minus a couple of, you know, it's an estimate right there. So it would add 10 cents to that. Mr. Jones. Al Jones, Assessor, Allen Road. I totally disagree. I think it's more in the neighborhood of a nickel, Steve. 16,000. And I would take, when it comes up, line 33, which is $1,000 for an assessor stipend, I'm gonna say move that to zero. That's why I continue to hold. So put that thousand towards this and we're down to 1,000 less. Does that make sense? Sure, I, I'm, I'm uh, our estimates on the tax impact, the, the, the tax rate impact is, is, I think it's fairly accurate. So I'm just gonna stick with that. I, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm five not, cents, I'm ten cents. Nine, so we'll, we'll agree to disagree. Okay. Except at least at a thousand dollars will be coming out of that line 33, that will be zero. That'll be the next thing that I, the next thing we talk about at some point. Good. No further discussion. Motion has been made and seconded on the 2%. I'm sorry? We step to the microphone, please. Uh, Dave Holcraft, 26 Allen Road, South Pond. Um, as most of you know, that the uh, the town, our town, is very generous and very good to our town employees. They have good uh, insurance package. They get great benefits. Uh, in the past seven, eight years, we've always they've always gotten a raise. Um, I don't think you people in this room know how much dire straits financially this town is in right now. And it is gonna impact your tax rate. No question about it, it's not gonna be a nickel. They're talking from what I've been following through the meetings, we're talking 50 cents per thousand, up, upwards up to two dollars. I don't know what exactly will you know, come out to be, but I think with this one year, I think this, the um, town employees can uh, take a seat back and say, hey, we're gonna do it for the town. Uh, the taxes in this town, as you know, are going up and up and up. So I think we need to, uh, the town, town employees should just take a little break and give us, give the taxpayers a little breather here. Thank you. No more discussion. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please raise your vote, raise your card. No, I wasn't going to count. Okay, that's 36 opposed. So the vote is 36 for, 48 against, the motion does not pass. So who had the, any items that were on hold that were not in that list? That, right, so we go uh, item eight. Who held item eight, line eight? Yeah. 
Adam Jolliker, Harvard Crossroad. Um, just on the computer maintenance, I've seen it seventeen thousand dollars the past couple of years. Can you? Can you? Okay. Right. Uh, Adam Jolliker at Harvard Crossroad. Um, on sec on line eight for computer maintenance, uh, seventeen thousand dollars. Just wondering what that actually covers, since it's been the past. It will be three years now. On what that actually goes to. Um, it seems like a lot for such a small town. It was three selectmen on what they you know, we pay that money for. I'm, I'm sorry, I, honestly, I could not, I could not hear. You could, can you answer that? Okay, so the $17,000 on line uh, eight for computer maintenance, apparently my arms are no longer long enough. Um, that was a contractual relationship with a maintenance company that was providing server maintenance as well as individual PC maintenance for the town. Uh, it included everything except for our email support, um, inclusive of, of the hardware upgrades at the time. Um, we are in the process of rebidding that contract because for the level of service, it, it was pretty high for what we were getting. Thank you. Line 11, in the balcony. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, on the, the line we were just speak, speaking of on the computer. I'd like to make a motion to bring that down to 12,000 rather than 17. I think 17 is excessive for what, for what we're doing. Is there a second on that? Not hearing one? No. Moving on to line 11. Who held line 11? Line 15, grant writer wages. Somebody hold that. No. Line 19, legal services. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, We've never used the legal fund, even when we have lots of lawsuits and different legal problems. Uh, we've never used up even 50 or 60,000, and now it's up to 80. Uh, I think that's uh, way too much. Even though if you have a, we have a few things pending still, uh, I'd like to see that brought back down to the 60 that we uh, have had for the last several years. And even years before that, we had a lot of problems, and we still never used the 60. And we need as much as we can get into this budget to keep our taxes down. So I'd like to make a motion to bring it back to 60. Is there a motion to bring it back to 60? Hearing none. Line 20. Who held line 20? Line 21. If you, if you held the line, if you could, uh, you know, remember to uh, explain what your question is. Hey. Mr. Moderator, I believe that was initially held and then when Bruce made a secondary motion, he left it out knowing that that was moving to a service. Was it 20 and 21? Was it was that what it was? 20 and 21. Okay, I missed that. So those were removed from the cell. Okay, I'm sorry I missed that. So the next one is 38, I believe. Treasurer's salary, that's another salary.
or 33 was removed. We have a motion to remove. Can we have a motion? Uh, I, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to re, to uh, take line 33 to zero. Can you read that, repeat that, please? Yep. I'd, I'd like to make a motion to move uh, assessor stipend line 33 from $1,000 down to zero. 33. 33. To zero. Is that correct? Okay. Mr. Jones. Do we have a second on that motion? Just to explain that, Al Jones again, that was a year ago, uh, voted on on the floor as a stipend for the assessor, um, and it was agreed to by the town. Subsequently, the everybody on the financial team except the assessor in this town is eligible for a stipend, so I will follow this up at some point with a motion, and then hopefully that motion that over the article to add it at a future time and back in, but not today. That's what. That's why. It's being so that motion has been made and seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please. Could, could you repeat the motion, please? I'm sorry? Repeat the motion. I'd make a motion to uh, take line 33 down to zero, assessor stipend from $1,000 down to zero. First, I'm sorry, certification stipend. Thank you. Line 33. Okay. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor, please raise your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. 38. I think the next one was. Mr. Moderator, for line 38, I believe it was omitted from that salary motion due to it moving to a service. Okay, Beth, what was 38 again, please? 38 was treasurer's salary and it was omitted from the previous salary motion. That was deleted from the, from the okay. motion. Okay, so that was removed, sorry. Right, line 40 was the treasurer's. Somebody held the treasurer's wages. Line 40. Yes, I'm questioning are we going to have an assistant treasurer? I was told that this position is being eliminated. Somebody answer that? Yes, it is. Excuse me? It is so, what? It, 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 the, the, Yes, that has been eliminated because with the service that we hired, there are four people that she has on her team, and she said she cannot take the liability on for an assistant assessor. I mean, for an assistant treasurer. So what are we doing with a lie item for twenty thousand no, dollars? No, no, no. Hold on. Did the assistant treasurer position be eliminated? The answer was yes. Assistant treasurer wages. You just told me the position's eliminated. But it wasn't being changed. You're snowballing us right here. We, we, don't, we don't know whether we're going to have an assistant treasurer no, there's not going to be boxes. I just but that's explained. what it says. Well, I didn't put the, the advisory board probably put that in as a mistake. Okay. 
um, the decision on the uh, town treasurer to fill that position was made Tuesday. Right. Three days ago. Yes. Okay. That document was printed two weeks ago. I'm the one questioning the document. You should be. And they say, remove the article. Remove the line item. I'm the one questioning it. That's a good point. I would think so. I mean, we just, we just voted down $17,000 for our employees, and you're sticking 20 in here that you just said you don't need. No. That's what it says, so, Beth. So, you know it so Bruce, I, Bruce, I understand where, you, where the way that you're doing your math. However, the, the overall contract cost for treasurer and assistant treasurer services for the town is going to equal almost exactly what is in this book today. It's actually going to... No, it's, it's a, it's so a, you're, yes. you're letting our assistant go and hiring somebody different. Yes. Hope that goes over well for you. So we signed the contract for an outsourced services for fiscal year 21 for a treasurer, which includes four staff members the same as the company I work for that provides outsourced accounting services, it's a liability to their company to have a town employee working for them. So for five people, that is the budget for her services. Like Steve said, we made the budget and printed this two weeks ago. We just signed the contract on Tuesday. Maureen Mariano, 6th Street in Brookfield. Through you, Mr. Moderator, to Laurie. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We... Through you, Mr. Moderator, to Laurie, the yes. town accountant. Do you have an assistant accountant in our outsourcing with your contracts? In my firm, yes, I do. No, does the town of Brookfield? No, I do so not have a So we don't have a line item for that. So then why do we have five Treasurer spots. Why do we need five? That's how she operates her firm. So my firm, I have three people that would count as my assistants. And I do utilize them behind the scenes. Is, that, is our position still part-time for the treasurer? No, it would be, a, it would be considered a, the same as mine on Sunday. One day a week. I'm not sure what exactly her contract says off the top of my we head. We can't afford this. I'm opposed. So if I understand this correctly, we're paying $70,000 for an outsourced treasurer's firm. I have a question to the council. I, I think this really, this has to be amended because this isn't really a treasurer's salary. I think you're going to have, you should really amend this motion and appropriate $70,000 for outside treasury services because I really think it's illegal if you do it otherwise. If I could just say one more thing, with you received twenty-one thousand dollars in free cash, um, and I, I'm open to speak to anyone about the current state of the town's finances. Um, there is a massive amount of cleanup to do to get your free cash where it should be. To, in order to do that, you need someone with a high level of experience to finish the cleanup. Our goal, and I have been working with Sarah Hunter for the last few months as she's been interim treasurer, our goal is to try to get all of this cleaned up before we close fiscal year 20, which we have about till the end of September. So that way you get a normal amount of free cash when we're at town meeting for next year so we're not in the same position. There's only one way to do that and that's having someone with experience in that office. Mary Lou Knight, Lane 21. A uh, point of clarification, what is the total amount for the contract for the treasurer's firm? The total amount of contract is $83,500. How much? $83,500. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator, 
I'm sorry, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I'd like to make a motion to amend the entire Treasury budget to the correct level that's reflected in the uh, contracted agreement and strike the lines that do not apply and, um, and, and adjust monies as necessary uh, so that we have a correct total for the Treasury budget. If it's not uh, $95,907, you know, how much is it? Mr. Moderator, through you, the, the balance between the salary lines and the cost of the contract, the intent is to fund that from the expense account. So the bottom line budget for the treasurer office would remain the same. It's the rebalancing of, the, of, of those line items. Uh, if you sum the treasurer salary, the assistant treasurer wages, and remove, I think it was $3,000 from the treasurer expense account, it gets us to coverage of that contract without any adjustment to the bottom line office cost for the treasury office. So the way that those lines would read, uh, in essence, and I, I don't, I'd have to, I need somebody to do the math between the two salary lines, but if you reduce the e expense line by $3,000 and add it back in to the, and make a single line for um, treasurer services outsource, uh, that's what Steve's motion would be in terms of numbers. Can somebody do that math real quick? But we do not need to, to move that bottom line number for the treasury line. We, we don't need to change the bottom line for the overall treasury office in order to execute that. So, excuse me, uh, just so I am clear, um, a treasure services outsourced, reading much the way the town accountant line items might, treasury uh, services outsourced would be the 50 plus 10 plus $20,107, that's $31,107. Excuse me, 8107. And then you're, you're, what you're also proposing is an additional $3,000 from Treasury expenses on that? Correct. Because if you include the Treasurer consultant line as well. So the Treasurer services outsourced will be a total of. Eighty-four thousand one hundred and seven dollars. No. Okay, give me a correct number then. So we'll have a treasurer outsourced budget of eighty-three thousand five hundred dollars, and then the that the payroll services stays at seventy-one hundred. And then the treasurer expense account goes to $6,667. And, and that will leave the bottom line budget the same and cover the current contractual cost. Motion. Can you give me those numbers again? So. Where are you at? So, line 30? so what, what will happen is line 38, 39, and 40 would go to zero. Okay. Uh, we're going to be, unfortunately, this is numbered with individual numbers, so we'll need a treasurer outsource services at $83,500, and line 42 of treasurer expense will go to $6,667. I'm sorry. I'm 
I'm sorry, that is line 42 will be 6607. Say that again, please. Line 42 yep. will be $6,607. Seven, zero. Seven, zero, seven. Yes. Zero, seven. And then there'll be a single outsourced treasurer line at $83,500. So there's no line for that in here presently, there's correct? That, uh, we would use that at, um, there's not currently a line in there that says outsource services. We could also just place that all on the line 39 treasurer consultant and zero those other lines. So we put 83.5 on under 39 and then uh, zero, 38 and 40. Okay. Mr. Cook? I'll, I'll second that because that's essentially the motion I was coming up here to make anyway. I think it's more transparent and accurate. Yeah. Excuse me. Mr. Clark? So. You know, there's a man up back up there who has a yellow sign in town. And he says you're not being transparent. And now I believe him. You guys should have amended this when we, when we questioned the numbered line items. Not me. All right, so we're set with the amended numbers and the added line. Excuse me, I have a question. Stand in here for a bit. Okay. Yes. Um, so understanding that this is you know almost a hundred thousand um, dollars, which is a lot. Uh, quite frankly, I know people who work in Boston for treasurers that don't make that much money. Um, <laughs> is this something that's potentially going to have to be paid again next year? If we were, if this were to pass, and you pay a hundred thousand dollars this year, we're gonna have to pay a hundred thousand dollars next year and a hundred thousand dollars the year after that. It's just my question, you're thinking farther ahead here. Um, it's a lot. Somebody want to answer that? Mr. Moderator, through you. So we have had years of inadequate reconciliation of the financial systems of this town. Years of it. We're going to have to execute two years worth of annual audits. We haven't had a successful completed audit in this town since 2013. In order to stabilize the financial situation, in order to reconcile those books and get a foundation that we can actually go forward from and start to reduce the overhead cost of maintaining that reconciliation, we got to bite the bullet this year. Oh, I understand this year. Okay. I'm talking about next year uh, or potentially the year after. I think we, I think, I don't know that we can predict that until we see what the outcome is of this next year audit and how we're going to have to address it. I can't speak the next year until we get through clarification uh, of what is actually present and we get through those audits. Okay. Right. Well, one of the main reasons I'm curious about all of this is, and I could have read this incorrectly. Um, but we don't have a very good credit rating with the town. So if we're gonna keep spending money to try to get money back, um, my hope is that we would see that sooner than later, um, so we can build up our credit rating and then actually be able to do everything. Because everything in here is either it has to borrow as, you know, for any kind of vote when we can't borrow money. So where we're gonna get this $100,000 is a little, a little hard for me to understand. Lives someone who lived out east it's more expensive for me to live in Brookfield. It costs me more than it does to live east of Boston. So. Just so we're all clear, that two weeks ago a document was put together and mailed to you. On Tuesday, after 
two months of searching for a treasurer, we were unsuccessful. And a decision had to be made before this evening, as far as I'm concerned, as to the treasury support that we needed for this coming year. So that on Tuesday, a decision was made. And again, I would appreciate your support that we get through this year with the audits so that we can move forward. Again, there will be a continued search. We, we are continuing to search for a treasurer. The contract that we signed has a 30-day period where either they can leave or we can uh, cancel the contract if we were able to find a, a treasury resource. But at this point, we have not found an individual to come in and, and we have hired a firm to do this work this year. May I ask how much you are offering for the treasurer position? You're paying $100,000 for this. How much you are offering for that full-time position? We're, we're just trying to get research, resumes in so that we understand that who might be qualified to do this work. Well, I we understand, but when you put a resume out, you also put a salary range. So we did sure. not. Okay. Yeah. Are we all set? Comment? Come to the microphone, please. <laughs> Brent Parrish, Town Farm Road, and I just wanted to make a quick comment. I understand that this, the budget process must be very difficult to do, especially with making all the cuts, but I just wanted to remind everybody that if we're not going to pay the town employees and give them the cost of living allowance, you're going to lose those people and you're going to end up with these additional, much higher expenses. Just a thought. I'd just like to point out that in fiscal year 20, we had $78,000 in the budget for treasurer, assistant treasurer, and treasurer consultant. This year, we are asking for $83,000 for the function outsourced of treasurer, assistant treasurer, and consultant. It's all wrapped together. We are getting a better quality person for a little more money and the expense line item is going down by $3,000. So you can look at it as a net change from $78,000 to $80,000. We need a treasurer. I think this is a good move. I apologize that it was not as clear as it could have been. The budget went to press two weeks ago. The consultant was hired on Tuesday. It came out today in the meeting as it should have. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, through you, I am troubled that when we came in here, uh, the advisory board told us there was a mistake in one of the numbers. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, I can't hear. Can people hear me out here? Yes. Okay, that's who I want to talk to. Um, I'm troubled that we were given a number, a mistaken number, when we first came in. And now there's a bunch of numbers that are wrong. How come we weren't told about those before the meeting started? Did we not know that nobody here, the advisory board, the selectman, the accountant, the assistant to the selectman, no, the town clerk, the moderator, nobody knew about these mistakes. I'm as troubled as Bruce is that a member of the town meeting has to tell all of our people up here that the budget is written wrong. How does that happen? I like that sound. <laughs> Hi there. Um, you can see how we've got our figures coming and going and, and, and this and that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I've been a disopposed of the uh, amount we've been spending for the treasurer, but you, you people need to know 
how messed up our books have been for the last six, seven years. And for us to spend a little bit more with the treasurer firm, we have to do this to get to move forward. Um, and we haven't got a treasurer, but we've had people in there who have been incompetent. They haven't done the job, and we've been paying all sorts of money to these people. And this has been going on for year after year after year. We need, we need to get this firm to get us in good shape in our books. We've got to get this town in shape. You can see how we've got numbers a little messed up tonight. Well, that happens. That's a mistake. But the town, this is how the finances in our town have been running for the last six, seven years. Uh, I was a chairman of the finance board several years ago, and I tried pointing this out, and I said this is going to come to a head, and here we are. So we need to shell out this money and get our books straight. Ask Lori if we lost any free cash in the last couple of years. Ask if we've lost any. I'd like to know that. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon, Sharon Mahoney, Long Hill Road. Um, is there a motion on the floor to make these changes that were um, that would lump the uh, amounts under? I'm sorry. Is I... is there a motion on the floor to make the changes that were in recommended about lumping the numbers together under the treasurer consultant fee to the eighty three dollars and eighty three thousand dollars and change? It's it's a point of order. I'd like to know if there is a motion on the floor. Yes, I, 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 I essentially asked for that, okay? Yes. And so I would like to make the motion formally, okay? And I would like to change, I would like to strike the lines, treasure salary, treasure consultant, treasure uh, wages to zero, add treasure services outsourced at $83,500, Treasurer payroll services at $7,100 and treasurer expenses at $6,607 for a total of $97,207. So there's a motion and I hear a second. There was a second. And I don't know if this is legal because I did have a question, but I would like to move the question on this motion. Move the question. Is there a second on that? Okay, she cannot move the question as a speaker. Is there a Mr. Moderator, through yeah. you. I'd yeah. like to move the question. I'd like to make a motion to move the question. A motion has been made to move the question. Is there a second? There is a motion that has been seconded to move the question. This is a two-thirds. Counters, I'm going to need you to count. All those in favor of moving question, please raise your card. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. I counted the people of the city. Oh, please. Yes, let's let's do a recount, please. Look. Where are you counting? What are we voting? <laughs> this is moving the question. It's a, it's a two thirds vote, yes. Okay. Earlier, earlier today, the town meeting allowed me to call the, one of the first procedural motions that we made to allow the moderator to call a two thirds without having to count. If you feel comfortable, Mr. Moderator, making the call, I believe under that motion you 
can make the call about it. Okay. Let me do it this way then. All those are not in favor of recalling, please raise your card. It's unanimous. So the motion passes. So now there is a motion to move the move the original motion to be as amended. All those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. Counters, I don't think I'm going to need you. And opposed? Motion passes. Okay, then I forget where we are. Okay. Well, 44 was a salary. Okay, yep. Line 125, school expenses. So hold on that, please. Yeah, I just wanted a clarification as to what are school expenses. It's, it's one line item. What is it? What school are we talking about? Somebody answer that, please. Deb Boyd, Associate Superintendent. That line, I believe, is the entire elementary school budget. I believe the, the listing there are your Tantasqua operation, Tantasqua transportation, and the other line is the full elementary budget. Well, so that covers all expenses and all salaries for the entire elementary school. If I may address the Finance Committee, could we have a little more clarification in this in the future? I mean, it doesn't even say Brookfield Elementary on it. That's, I'm just asking that question. You know, you make the rest of the departments break their budget out and you print it that way. Maybe we should have a little bit of breakout in the elementary school. That's all. If I may, Mr. Moderator? Yes. I, I agree that the, the um, title could be clearer, but Mass General Law actually requires that the school department lines be exactly that, the total. There's a separate public hearing required every year that goes into every single line item within the budget and that's when folks should come and question, and the bottom line is the legal entity is the school committee that then puts forward the total dollar and the town meeting has to vote to approve or not approve that total dollar. You're telling me it's against the law just to publish something so we know what we're talking about? It's not against the law to maybe publish a little more information. It's against the law to, to vote on anything other than the total dollar. I'm just asking for a little information, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. If we um, could do that, it might be moved. Well, I will, as the accountant, I can, we can vote to change the name of the line to Brookfield um, Elementary Expenses, but as Deb said, it's, the Department of Education has strict guidelines on the way we vote the budgets and the way they set their budget. So the way it's printed right here is the way it has to be. But we can change the line name if you would like. I was just confused when I looked at it. I don't, I don't know where the Brookfield Elementary School is anymore because it seems to me, oh, four or five years ago, they had a breakdown. And so the law changed and we don't have to disclose anymore in, in this form. We just have to, we have to do it as the school provides it to us. Wonderful. More knowledge we don't have. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Heller. <coughs> Through the moderator, um, I'm not questioning the amount here. I'm only questioning the name of the line item. School expenses is really everything. Brookfield Elementary budget. I'd like to repeat what Bruce just said. This is not clear, is it? 
I don't understand who reviewed this before it came to the town meeting. Is this just expensive? It's not that it was proof before town meeting. That has been the name of the line of that account for years. It has said school expenses for yeah. multiple years. We can, again, we can vote to change the name of the line tonight if you would like, within reason. It can say Brookfield Elementary School Expenses. How about Brookfield Elementary School Budget? It's in, it's that, not would that fit within the state guidelines? Mrs. Boyd, is that valid? Sure. I'd like to make that motion after we vote for the, the amount. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not hearing anything. I think this setup is made for people to hear, the, the audience to hear, not for the actors on the stage to hear. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, the motion that, that the gentleman had was to, to change the, that, that we vote that sum on that line with the title of Brookfield Elementary School Budget. This motion was made and seconded. Okay. Discussion? I'm ready to vote. All in favor, please signify your raising your cards. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Did you have another one, Todd? You also? Okay. I think that... I think that's it. Right? Yes? There was a question on item 172. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, I know that there was a hold on uh, uh, line number 202. 202? Yes, sir. It's the uh, Water Department Commission salary. Um, I just want everybody to know here that when we went through this uh, budget process, it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous every year, and this year was even harder than, than it's ever been, obviously. Um, what we were trying to make sure that we had as little impact on the town as we could. We asked every department to give us as many cuts as they could and to help us to keep the, keep the cost down so that we were, low, we were raising the tax rate as little as possible. The water commissioner's salary is a $600 stipend for three different people for years worth of work. And when we did the water department, the water commissioner stepped up and said, take our salary away as part of our cut for our department. I know that it's, it's horrible that we are, you know, trying to keep things in line and not offering raises, but I don't think these gentlemen deserve to not get paid that little bit of money for what they do. We accepted it that night, and it's bothered me since we did, and I'd like to make a motion that we adjust line number 202 back to $1,800 so that these gentlemen can get their stipend for the work they do. So a motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Two ten and two eleven. No, two ten and two eleven. No. We don't write that those are in the articles. Right. So there's no. So do we have a new total? New total of eight five eight seven zero seven zero. Eight five eight seven zero seven zero.
number for the budget, the total roll up is 8587070. And that's, we have a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. We're going back to Article 1. Article 1. No, we have we didn't do Article One yet. We did two. Remember, Article One, Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town accept the annual report of the town official as printed. Second. No motion has been made. Is there a second? It has been seconded. All in favor, please signify by raising your card. Opposed? Motion passes. Article 2. So I will read the article and a very brief description, and then whoever is going to be the proponent. We, Mr. Moderator, we already did Article 2. I'm sorry. We already did Article 2. You already did Article 2. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Article 3, pay money uh, for an invoice for FY19 to pay an outstanding bill to KP lot. This requires a four-fifths vote. So this will be a hard count. Okay, Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the town raise and appropriate the sum of $10,386.44 to pay a KP law invoice for FY19. Second. So we have a motion and it has been seconded. Any discussion? All right, counters, I'm gonna need a hard count on this. We Maybe know. it's gonna be unanimous. I'm sorry? Maybe it's gonna be unanimous. Let me ask for Anybody that's not in favor, if you are opposed to this article, please signify by raising your card. There, I, I see none, so it is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> that, I declare that a vote. Article four, um, to pay money to pay another invoice for FY19, unpaid bill for KP law. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $3,074.81 to pay KP law invoice for FY19. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. This also requires a four-fifths vote. Any that are opposed? Question? Yes. Uh, I think the amount is different. I'm going to have to come to the microphone. I'm sorry. Uh, why, why were these bills not paid? Why are they so late being paid? Is there a reason for it? Mr. Moderator, for you. Yep. The, these bills came in uh, after we had closed the books for the previous year. Okay. Um, Carol Plum, Pine Lane. I think the 
Amount in the um, article, or the amount in the book, says 3,741.81. Carol, I meant, I read it wrong. What's that? It's, no, at least that number. I, I had read it wrong. Oh, okay, because I, I, okay, so that's, that, that's the amount. Yeah, it's $3,741.81. Okay. okay, thank you. So we're all set. Motion has been made and seconded. Any more discussion? All those opposed to approving this, please signify by raising your card. I see none. I call it unanimous. Thank you. Article 5. To uh, money to pay an invoice for FY19, uh, unpaid uh, balance to Stonebridge Press. Oh, Mr. Moderator, yes. Article 5. I move that the town raise an appropriate $176.40 to pay KP. No. For Stonebridge Press, this is incorrect. All right, thank you, John. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. This also requires a four fifth vote. All those that are against. Uh, paying this, uh, approving this article, please signify by raising your card. I see one. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I see none. I got a question, Mr. Moderator. The, mo please. the motion is approved. Yeah, could you explain why that bill was late as well? That was a bill owed by the ZBA, and they got behind by the time we discovered it. It was too late for them to pay it in the last fiscal year. I don't know, they just didn't pay it. I think there was one issue that it kept going back for a signature. Thank you. We declare that a unanimous vote. Article six. Uh, see if the town will vote an appropriate $14,000 from FY20 Cable Peg Access Fund. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town appropriate $14,000 for the FY Cable PEG Access Fund for the purposes of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight for public access cable for fiscal year 2020. Can we have a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? I got a question. Yes. Uh, could you explain that? Explain what this is all about to the uh, townspeople here. Um, seeing, I don't know if it has anything to do with our channel, uh, the t uh, TV channel for the town. It hasn't been on in two years. So, does this does this bill reflect anything from that? So we receive um, money from charter quarterly it has to be used for public access public education in, when municipal modernization came out in fiscal year 16 it required every town to set up a receipt reserved for appropriation or an enterprise fund to basically store away these funds so they could only be used for cable related expenses your town voted to do a receipt reserved for appropriation fund. So anytime we receive a payment from charter, it goes into this account. Unfortunately, since fiscal year 16, the prior accountant never actually handled the account correctly. So every year when we receive the money, it goes into this account. It can be used for cable related expenses, but the catch is, the money has to be appropriated in front of the townspeople at town meeting so you know how much the cable studio needs for each fiscal year. The money is there in their account. It does not come out of our free cash or general fund. It just shows how much they think they have in potential expenses for that year. Well, maybe we should use some of that money to get the TV station back on for the townspeople. It's been off for two years. What are you doing with the money? Sitting on it? Yeah. 
Trudy O'Connell, Hayden Avenue. Should that be for fiscal 2021? It says take the fiscal 20 cable access fund and have it for fiscal 2020. Is it, is it the same year? I don't quite understand. So, like I said, unfortunately, the prior accountant did not manage this account properly. Um, when I got to town last year, it was too close to your town meeting for me to figure anything out. Um, we are doing this article for fiscal year 20 to cover the money that the cable studio needed to spend this fiscal year that we're currently still in. There is another article coming up in the warrant to cover fiscal year 21. Okay. So we're doing this article retroactively. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Chair? Sharon Mahoney, Cable Access Committee. We're supposed to be a committee of seven. For the past three years, we've been operating with three people. Two of them work full time. We have an expensive system that only one of us has learned how to use because of that lack of time. We're doing the best we can. The system went offline. Part of the money that's appropriated in this warrant article is to pay for a comprehensive support from Telview, which is the company that sold us the system. The remaining balance is for a fee that we pay to Telview to use their, they have a system where we can, we can take content from their network and put it online. And I want to speak to the next article for fiscal year 21 since that was brought up. We were ready to hire somebody to work part time in the studio and address problems as they arose instead of us trying to find time to do it ourselves. That person pulled out after we had offered the job because they were moving out of state. We do not have a current candidate for this. We are going to try to hire somebody again to man the station and to address problems and to do other things as far as getting people involved in cable access. But right now, we're down to two people because one of our number has resigned as of this year. So, I guess the short answer is we're doing the best we can. If there's anybody in this room who would like to help out with cable access, please see me after the meeting or email me at smahoneybrookfield.maus. We'd be happy to get you on board because we could certainly use the help. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. Yep. All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed, motion passes. Thank you. Article seven, FY20 article, vote to transfer the balance of the FY20 account identified below. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the balances between FY20 accounts as written in Article 7 of the Town Warrant. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. Opposed? Motion passes. Article 8. Vote pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half to amend the town's general bylaw, Chapter 5, Section 8. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. I'm, Smith. I move that the town vote pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 44, Section 53E, 1 slash 2, to amend the town's general bylaw, Chapter 5, and Section 8 entitled Financial Affairs, in establishing various revolving uh, funds, specifically, sorry guys, I gotta do this, Speci uh, spe specifying that the department receipts to be credited to each, each fund, the departmental purposes or pro programs for which the <clears throat> each fund may be expended and the ent entity authorized to ex uh, expend each fund by adding the following new revolving funds to Section F, authorized revolving funds, as contained in, an, in the annotated warrant, and further that the town vote to set FY 2020 spending limits 
for the revolving funds as written in Article 8 in, in the town warrant, except that the phrase or take any action relative thereto be admitted. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. Opposed? Motion passes. Articles 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 are in a block vote. Oh, Mr. Moderator, there's a, a modification to that. Modification? Yes. Uh, so uh, I'll be making a motion for Articles 9 through 16. Articles 9. 9 through 16. 15. 16. 16. 16. Yes, sir. That's the block vote. That's the block vote. Okay. Okay. So, so, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to approve Articles 9 through 16 as written in the town warrant, except that the phrases or take any action relative thereto be omitted. We have a motion and it, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 17. Mr. Moderator, I, yep. move, I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar to plow private roads. Second. We have a motion and it has been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. Opposed? Motion passes. Article 19. The library trustees to extend, and this is in reference to the library trustee, board of Mr. trustees. Mr. Yes. Article 18. I'm sorry. I should have moved my hand. <laughs> Article 18. Uh, to see if the town will, uh, money to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $17,500 to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of Article 18, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 19. Um, Library Board of Trustees to extend the lease on a certain real property. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. Black. I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen and or the Library Board of Trustees to extend the lease on certain real property and the improvements thereon, commonly known as 18 Common Street in Brookfield, described with the Worcester South Registry of Deeds in Book 17143, page 134, such period of time and upon such terms and conditions <clears throat> as the Board of Selectmen and or the Library Board of Trustees shall determine to be appropriate and to transfer from available funds in the Library Building Maintenance Account the sum of $17,500 for the rent for said extension and to authorize the Board of Selectmen and or the Library Board of Trustees to extend the term of an existing option to purchase said property as they deem convenient and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen and or library board of trustees to execute any and all documents to carry out the intent of this article. Second. A motion has been made and second. Discussion. Carol. Um, I just want to say that this is the third year now that we've been going through this. The first year we put out, we wanted to lease it just to see how it would work. Um, and it's been very successful. A lot of boards have been using it. It's um, been very convenient. We've convenient for storage and so forth. Last year, we had to, I forget what the problem was last year, but we had to extend the lease again. And of course, this year it's the financial. I mean, I think last year was financial too. So it's basically prolonging it. We really want to purchase it. Um, I don't know if uh, we want to give Brenda, the library director, permission to speak or if, we, or if people understand what's going on because we've done this for three years now. So. I don't know if there are any questions. Apparently not. I don't have my yellow card. I have questions. <clears throat> yes. Is, is, the whole is, it, 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Is this building uh, handicapped accessible? Not at the moment because we're leasing it, so we can't make any real improvements to it until we own it. It just says improvements here in the, in the article. Right. What, what does that mean? Well, we can't really do anything to the building because we're leasing it. Okay. So we're but of course, if we purchase the building, we have to make all the appropriate handicap um, accessible. Okay, so what are we actually getting? What is the town actually paying this lease for? What are we actually using this building for? A lot of, for storage, for um, a lot of committees and our meeting there. So it's been a very useful thing. But uh, if it's not handicapped accessible, that's illegal. We can't even use the upper town hall because of this. Does anyone want to answer any of this? Because we're I, spending a lot of I money on leasing. I just explained um, that we can't do anything. We are leasing it. We don't own it. Okay, then maybe we shouldn't be using the building at all if it's not handicapped accessible. Uh, we can't hear you. The microphone. It's not illegal to hold a meeting in a building that is not handicapped accessible unless there is a request within 48 hours before the meeting for access. And that, that comes from the state law for small towns and ADA accessibility. So unless there was a need for an accessible location, the, uh, the meeting could be moved with notice. Okay. okay, thank you. I don't agree with that at all. We could, we could be doing that with the town hall then. But that's the law. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, let's Kelly ask Metz, the, uh, I'd like to move the question. Do I have a second? I'm, I'm still speaking right now. I'm not done. Let's ask the uh, town council uh, about the ADA, about this 48 hour notice. I wanna know what the answer is to that. Behind you. Hello. Hey, thank you guys for having me here. I'm Jeff Blake from town council, uh, KP Law, and through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, um, the, the speaker that just got up and indicated that there is exemptions and there is um, modifications to the accessibility of, a, of some public buildings with respect to uh, meetings if there is a certain threshold met with respect to the number of people in town. I don't really know how many people you have in town and I haven't had an opportunity to review whether or not this building would fall within one of those exemptions. So I'm just going to take the speaker for, for, what, for what it's worth, because I'm assuming that she's done, done the research on that. Okay. I just think that's a, lot of, that's a lot of money to be using it a few times and then storing a bunch of junk in the building. Thank you. The money is being transferred out of a library account for this lease for this year. So there's no reason appropriate in the part of the town. Right, but those are a lot of donations that are coming from the townsfolk in town here. Scully Metz, I'd like to move the question. Okay, okay we've already got people in line, so they will have to have the opportunity to speak. Al, you want to speak? We have two more people that, uh, that were in line prior to the motion. And me. Okay. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, when the, we had the ADA folks from the state come in and go through our town hall, they said exactly what uh, Kathy LaRocca said, that it's okay as long as you make accommodations if the request comes in 48 hours before, and then the, the meeting has to be moved to an ADA-compliant uh, building. So she is 100% correct. Thank you. In the balcony? Uh, yes, I just have um, just a, a question, a general question, because um, I know the building is useful. Uh, what's stopping us from purchasing it? Instead of borrowing, borrowing, we've spent, so what's that, 
forty-one thousand dollars that we were going to have. Okay, so this is this is the third year that this article has come up. The first year, we definitely wanted to lease it to see if it was going to be a viable option, and and it's worked out very well. What happened was we had we ran into a financial problem in this town. So last year we had to we had to renew the lease. And again, the financial problem stays with us, and so we had to renew it again. This, we didn't want this to happen. We wanted to be purchasing it by now. Has there been any discussion with um, the landowner or deed owner or whatnot to yes. possibly come up with something where instead of continuously paying $17,000 a year and just leasing it, that we could enter some kind of purchasing agreement where we can pay towards and then over a certain number of We have the, per we, we we're leasing to purchase. We would have purchased two years ago. But it's because of the financial situation, we don't have the money to to come up to 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 buy it at this time. No, but what I'm saying is we're spending seventeen thousand dollars a year to lease it. But is there anything that after say we end up leasing this for another five years, if it turns out to be that we would does hope that, does that we would hope that it does the purchasing price. We hope that we never have to. We hope that this is the last time we have to be doing this as far as leasing. No, I understand. Mr. That. Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. Um, in, in the negotiations last year, because the intent was to take this article to a special town meeting, the property owners had actually made some allowances for the, the lease monies from that year to be somewhat applicable to the purchase price of the property, okay? We have not gone through those negotiations with the property owner at this time for this year's lease, um, but it, it's certainly something that, that we can um, take a look at as an option with regards to the, the ongoing relationship around this property. So it's, it's not an adversarial relationship, it's a very cooperative relationship, so there are some, there's potentially some opportunity um, for what you're alluding to, but it's not currently in the standing contract for this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that was exactly what I was looking for, thank you. Um, I just want to say that the, the beauty of the whole thing is that it's, it is the lot right next to the library. And it's a double lot, and so in the future, if you know, if somebody, gosh, God forbid, I suppose, but if somebody wanted to take it down, they they would have the land. The land is is there, and it's right next to the library. Mr. Moderator, yeah. um, I just I, my concern with the way this is worded is that at any time it seems that we could make the purchase. Um, I I really feel like we're overpaying for the house for the value. But uh, on top of that, to answer um, Adam's question, uh, we also, I, I don't believe at this time that we'd be able to get a loan to pay for the house if we were gonna, if we were gonna try to get a loan to pay it off, just, just so you know. We'd have to have the cash. Peter? Um, in terms of financing, we, hope to be in a better situation next year to look at a loan. We have one current debt um, that's a short-term debt. We do borrowing every year, and that's for the police station. Um, with the town's current financial situation and lack of audits, uh, your last actual audit was fiscal year 13. Um, we need to have audits done yearly. Um, a bank will not consider new financing without an audit. We have an audit to start in two weeks, and then another one will be done in the spring. With both those audit data, we'll be in a better situation to actually do another financing. We didn't want to jeopardize the financing we needed to renew. Peter? Peter O'Connell, I'm Chairman of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. This project has been presented to the Capital Planning Committee uh, in the last two years. The Capital Planning Committee reviewed it carefully uh, uh, with the, and made the recommendation twice now uh, to put this before the town meeting to actually borrow the money to acquire the property. As Lori has indicated, we can't borrow the money this year. So in order to keep the option alive of acquiring this uh, property, we needed to extend the lease. So this is a, a way of keeping the option alive to bring this proposal back as soon as it is possible for us to go out to seek a loan. 
Capital Improvement Planning Committee feels uh, that this is a, a, a very inexpensive option to both meet the, the library's needs for expanded programming and for the historical commission's need for storage uh, to attract and keep uh, uh, collections related to Brookfield's history and identity that we have not been able to keep in town because we don't have a, a home for the historical commission. Uh, if we were to build in addition onto the library, it would cost us probably 10 times the amount uh, as acquiring 18 Common Street. This is an inexpensive uh, solution to, to problems that two of our organizations have. Now we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves in terms of the purchase. All you need to know now is that this lease keeps the option alive of acquiring the property and solving the problems of two of our departments. It's, it's, it's something we recommend, and uh, particularly since it's going to have no impact on the tax rate for the lease. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded to move the question. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of moving the question, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? The motion passes to move the question. So back to the article. Those in favor of Article 19, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? That's a, that's, that's a vote. That's a yes. That's a, all right. Um, was a two-thirds vote? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. There was one, one opposed. I declare the two-thirds vote. Article 20. Uh, this article is for the purpose of planning and designing and improving and renovating and or equipment at the playground known as Lewis Field. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town appropriate the sum of $119,633.05 for the purposes stated in the warrant with the funding sources noted below, which I'll read later, and to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow the sum of $66,533.05 under the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 788C and or any other enabling authority, provided that no funds shall be expended unless and until the town has received a grant commitment in the amount of $83,743 under the Park Grant Program 301 CMR 5 to undertake the foregoing project and further to transfer the care, custody, and control of Lewis Field to the Board of Selectmen 4 and to dedicate said field to park and active recreation purposes under the provisions of General Law Chapter 45, Section 3 and authorize the Board of Selectmen and or its designee to apply for and accept on behalf of the town funds granted under the Park Grant Program and or any other funds, gifts, grants under any federal and or state program in any way connected with the scope of this article and enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effectuate the foregoing project. The funds as follows, uh, $66,533.05 funded by borrowing, $5,000 grant from the Jepson Fund that is, a re that is restricted to this project, $4,000 Community Club Apple Country Fair grant that is restricted to this project, $16,000 private donation gift that is restricted to this project, $12,000 $882.75 transfer from account number 875 open space recreation stabilization. 
$9,100 proceeds from sale of previous playground equipment. $2,315.12 transfer from account 786 playground donation account for a total sum of $133,000. Forty dollars and eighty-seven cents. We have a motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Right, right into the microphone, please. Mr. Moderator, at the request of the town accountant, she is asking for additional clarity as to the accounting of the funding sources. I'd like to amend the Article 20 as to read to include expenses and the allocation of resources to fund the project as follows. The costs are the playground equipment site prep and required electrical upgrade cost, $119,633.05. Anticipated project overrun costs at 10%, $11,963.31 for a total of expenses of $131,596.36. Our funding, we have received a park grant from the state for $83,743, a grant from the Jepson Fund restricted to the project for $5,000. A Brookfield Community Club grant restricted to the project for $4,000. We request transfer from Fund 874, the Open Space Recre Recre Recreation Stabilization Account, for $12,882.75. Proceeds from the sale of the old playground equipment, $9,100. Fund 786, the playground donation account, has $2,000. $315.12. And we have received a wonderful and generous donation from the Art and Elizabeth J. Family Foundation for $16,000, which brings the total to $133.40. So any overruns would be placed in the open space fund for any future projects. This project is fully funded. All right, so that's a motion. Do you have that in writing, please? you have one copy or two? I'll take two. Mr. Moderator, yeah. if I may real quick, I just wanted to point out to everyone that uh, this is, if you didn't get all that, a zero cost item to the town. And if you haven't been by Lewis Field in the past two weeks, the old equipment's already gone. So there's nothing now. So 
It's a zero cost project. I just, anybody who's on the fence, I want you to consider that. And consider the fact that we don't have a playground now. It's already been sold. So I just want everyone to know that in case you haven't gone by and you think that if we don't pass this, we'll just use the old playground. There isn't one. Not only that, we will give back all of that money, except for the open space money. The playground money and the open space money will have to be returned and will jeopardize future grant projects for this, for the town. Okay, thank you. So, so the motion has been made and seconded and the council has, has made mention and note that uh, normally a, uh, an increase in money is, is, um, should not be beyond the scope of the project. This is right at the, uh, at the recommended limit so we'll accept it as presented. I got a question, Mr. Moderator, when you're ready. I'm sorry? I have a question when you're ready. Go ahead. Yeah, could you just kind of explain to everybody here financially, you know, I think this is good for our town and I think it's good for our children, but could you a little elaborate a little bit on the financial part of how it's not gonna cost the town any money? And uh, seeing that, seeing that, uh, you already removed the playground and we're just voting on it tonight. Um, but could you explain the finances of this? Uh, if we get the grant or if we don't, how this is all gonna pan out? So, so Mr. Moderator, through you. Yes. Did you wanna take it? Take it Somebody wanna take that? Yeah, it's my understanding that uh, we do have the grant. Uh, the last piece for us to get the grant is that it has to be approved at town meeting with the exact specific wording. Uh, hence the reason why everything was remodeled. But the grant is there, and we just ha we have to, all the only thing they're waiting for is the approval from the town with the right wording, which is what we just heard. With that, the grant is there, we're all set. Everything's all set, it's all lined up. We just had to get the official vote from the town. We say yes, it costs us zero. Trust me, we've gone through this a bunch of times. We went through it with all the rec committee and everybody. We wanna do, if you look in the book, it says in the book, the advisory committee, um, you know, we support this as long as it's a zero cost. Uh, we've spent a lot of time with everybody on the rec committee, with the selectmen, we've all been working together on this to make sure it's not gonna cost anybody a dime and we're gonna have an ADA approved playground for our town, which I think is pretty awesome. And I think it's great that so many people who are gonna go unrecognized probably did so much work behind the scenes to make this happen for our town. Most of the guys on the rec committee and a lot of other people. The um, article had to be written a certain way like Tony explained. Um, it does say that we have to borrow $66,000 that is purely for the wording of the article. We will receive our grant funding before we have to technically borrow any money. Um, we have donations and the listing of all the ways we are covering the town share of the money. The only reason we would have to borrow any funds is if we didn't receive the grant money. Um, that would not come until the end of next fiscal year. Yeah. Uh Ian Newton, Lincoln Street. Um, they, pretty much, they pretty much said everything that I was going to say. Uh, the only thing I want to add to that is the removal of the equipment of the prior playground. Um, the playground was out of compliance. It wasn't safe. Uh, we've known that we were uh, kind of living on borrowed time with that playground as it was. That's why we started this, uh, this project in the first place. Um, and through the work of getting all of these extra grants and uh, donations, we've been able to bring you a playground that is practically twice as big at zero cost to the taxpayer uh, as that's been mentioned. Would you just wipe that down for me? Mm -hmm. Yep, Al. Big guys in a row, you're going to have to raise that up from us. <laughs> or Neil, one of the other. Al Jones. 
just to clarify, the uh, assessor's map and lot listed are incorrect. That map and lot does not exist in the town. Um, so, it'd be, so it should actually say map 6C-1, lot 147. Oh. I want to make sure it ends up on the right lot. Say, say that again, Al. What is it? 6C-1 is the map. Yep. The lot is 147. Make a motion to amend. Second. Second. A motion to amend has been made and seconded. All in favor? We see in favor. And opposed? Motion to amend passes. Hi, Bill Simpson, um, uh, North Brookfield Road. Uh, I'd just like to really appreciate the rec committee for all the work that they've done, Ian and Jeff and everybody on that. I think you guys have done tremendous work and you really deserve some applause for that. So thank you. And, and, and not only that, Kathy, who came up here and spoke, she didn't mention it, but she's the one who put this whole grant package together, so. What a gift to the town that we have these people. And um, with that, I move the question. Okay. All right. So we have a we have a motion to on the on the amendment uh, as as presented. We we, voted the we did vote that. Okay. So now we're going to vote on the article. All right. Moving the questions. Moving the questions. Moving the questions. So you're voting on the 133, 596, 36 amended amount. All in favor, please raise your card. And opposed, motion passes. Oh, Victoria, two thirds, I'm sorry, yes. What's that? And opposed. All right, that's two thirds. Article 21, uh, specific to the purpose of providing safe walking and running track at Lewis Field. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Lincoln. Um, I move that the town appropriate the sum of $140,000 for the purpose stated in the warrant and to fund this appropriation to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow said sum under provisions GL Chapter 44, Section 7, 8, and 8C, and or any other enabling authority, provided that no funds shall be expended unless until the town has received a grant commitment in the program in the amount of $98,000 under the PAC Grant Program 301 CMR 500. To undertake the foregoing project, said funds be payable in the fiscal year 2022, and to further to transfer the care, custody, control of the Lewis Field to the Board of Selectmen for and to dedicate said park to park and active recreation purposes under the provisions of GL Chapter 45, Section 3, and authorize the Board of Selectmen or its designee to apply for and act on behalf of the town fund granted under the park grant program and or other funds, gifts, grants under the, any federal and or other state program in any way connected with the scope of this article and enter into all agreements to execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effect the foregoing project. Motion has been made and seconded. Now, was Mr. Handing going to speak on this tonight? 
So this article is basically the first step that we took when we... You're going to have to get real close to the microphone here. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going. Um, so this article is similar to the one that we had to vote on. It's the first step in getting this playground done. So it's basic, it might, uh, to try to simplify it, it's basically saying that we're going to authorize looking at funding a project in 2020. It gives us a full year and a half to fundraise to get the money to put a walking track around Lewis Field. So a yes vote is allowing us to start the process of fundraising again so that we can have another zero cost project for a walking track around Lewis Field. I'd like to amend this the same way we did the last one. The, uh, I don't know what 0006 is, but it should be 6C-1-6C-1-6. Dash dash six. Six same as the last time, yeah. dash 1, dash 147. So a motion has been made and seconded to amend the uh, assessor's map to 6C1-147. All in favor of the amendment, please, and opposed. Motion passes. Yep. You all set? Any further discussion? I got a question, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you tell us? Could you tell us what we're going to get for 140,000? What are they actually going to do over there at Lewis Field for 140,000? The idea is to have a walking trail that goes around the outskirts of the property line. It's about it's roughly a mile and a tenth. Uh, it's one of the things that came up on <coughs> all the open space uh, meetings that were had, identified as an item that was wanted by the town, and um, something that we had been researching for a couple of years, and uh, so it would be a walking trail around the outskirts of the property so that folks had a safe place to walk and ride bikes. Is that going to be, uh, is the trail going to be paved, gravel, dirt? And where did you get your uh, where did you get your estimate of 140,000? Uh, we reached out to through uh, through Ryan at Highway had done the project in Palmer. Got an estimate from what they did their project I think was about two tenths of a mile less. Uh, theirs was hard pavement. We're not locked into that at this moment, but that was the the genesis of that number was the Palmer project. Plus doing the math of adding this, the amount of uh, actual pavement you were going to do, and then knowing it was two years in the future, adding a buffer of about 10%. Have you actually got any contractor to actually give you hard numbers? Pardon me? Have you actually talked to any contractors to get a hard number? Uh, no, sir, it's an estimate. Yeah, I mean, right sir, into the microphone, please. This seems like a big project. <clears throat> It's a big project. The idea is to bring it to the town at a zero cost in the way that the playground was. So it'd be zero cost to the town? The, I, that is okay. the idea of this, is to, the park grant would represent, and Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, please, the park grant would represent roughly 80% of the cost, and the balance would be fundraised and uh, grant written. Do you have any? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Kathy, Mr. Cook. Um, we would be reimbursed at 70% of the cost. Right, right um, into the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. 70% of the cost, and that would roughly be 98000 We're talking about up to 140 Um But this vote 
um, is contingent upon actually getting the award. So we're in the process of applying. This is actually giving us permission to do so. And it's not binding unless we get that money. So in, by FY22, we are hoping to get another Jepson grant, um, perhaps some more, you know, go to, back to some of the funding sources that we've gone to. There's also a possibility of community block grants. Um, federal money is allowed. So there are a lot of possibilities for funding that we could pursue that we have a very good chance of getting. But um, this yes vote would be contingent upon actually receiving that park award. So um, there would be no cost to the town one way or the other. Mr. Cook. I have a question to the moderator. Um, I, I, I just want some more information about this, this walking track. I assume it's going around the perimeter of the entire property, correct? Absolutely. Because, okay. The reason I'm asking, years ago we, when we looked at expanding the baseball field, out the outfield, we ran into issues that the property goes into wetlands and we couldn't do it. So I assume there's some exemption on a walking track because you're going to be in wetlands here if I recall the property. But, no. No. Nothing's changed with the geography of the field. Yeah. So right, right into the microphone, please. Clearly nothing has changed with the geography of what's at Lewis Field. So to your point, there are wetlands there. So the track will be configured to take that, those things into account. We're not looking to go and get exemptions and you know, put something into the, you know, into the wetlands that would affect that. It, you know, it's, it's still in a very conceptual stage. Again, this is the first step to say, yeah, you can apply for that grant. So but it's a fair point and one that would be taken into consideration, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have a uh, question to the town accountant through you. Uh, Lori, if we approve this article, will it affect the town expenditure? Will it increase any of the line item budgets versus if we did not approve it this year at this meeting? So it does not, so approving this does not change any expenditure. Whether or not we get the grant during the year, our expenditure in fiscal year 21 does not change. So approving this, it is a big project, but even if we get the grant, we're still going to have to approve it in fiscal year 22, but we don't have a chance of getting the grant and getting this project unless we green light it now. I move the question. Mr. Moderator, move the question. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to move the question. I just wanted to address this gentleman's question about conservation. Um, we had to actually submit the entire project um, in 2019 when we applied for the original grant and we had to get approval that there would be no negative impact from um, the Department of Conservation and we do have that approval. So it's already been gone into and we have the approval to do this project in writing. So. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to move the question. All those in favor, please raise your card. And opposed? We're moving the question. So the, the question is on the approval of Article 21 as amended. All those in favor, please raise your card. Is this two thirds? Uh, let, let, me, let me do it this way. All those opposed, please signify by raising your card. It's unanimous. I declare that a unanimous vote. It passes. Article 22, uh, money to the for the purchase of protective closing, clothing for the fire department. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move the town raise and appropriate $5,000 to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 23, uh, money to fund uh, necessary repair work to engine number two. Uh, this is also fire department. 
Mr. Moderator. Yes, I move right. to the town raise and appropriate $14,400 for necessary repair work on engine two for the fire department. Second. We have a motion and it has been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed, motion cast passes. Article 24, the purpose of funding cable related costs, general oversight of public access to cable. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Ms. Lincoln. I move the town appropriate the sum of $31,900 from the cable peg access account for the purpose of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for the upcoming fiscal year. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. All opposed? Motion passes. Article 25, transfer a sum of billing receipts account to the fund for fiscal 2021 ambulance wage account. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town transfer 189,000 from the ambulance billing receipts account to fund the fiscal 2021 ambulance wages account. The motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 26, to transfer a sum of money in billing receipts account to fund the fiscal 2021 ambulance expense account. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town votes to transfer 40000 from the ambulance billing receipts account to fund the fiscal 2021 ambulance expense account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 27, vote to transfer uh, a sum of money for the ambulance revenue account to the new ambulance purchase account. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Snyder. I move that the town votes transfer $3,400 from the ambulance revenue account to the new ambulance purchase account. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 28, uh, to see if the town will vote to raise the rate, uh, rate to vote to raise the annual sticker fee at the transfer station. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise an annual sticker fee at the transfer station by $10. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion, Mr. Cook. I'll just go with it as it is. Um, I just want to raise an issue with this. Um, trash disposal is one of, to me, one of the essential services that the town provides along with fire police and schools. And for those of you who weren't here 30 years ago, when we capped the landfill and created the transfer station, the intent at the time was never to have the sticker fee cover the entire cost. In fact, when we had the landfill, uh, the operation of trash services in this town was done under the general fund. So the concern I have here is that we're starting to raise the sticker fee. And I understand the buying we're in in terms of costs, but I really don't think this is a direction we want to go in, nor was it the original intention for those of us who were here 30 years ago when we created a transfer station. Any further discussion? Mr. Clark? I'd like to know how many residents in Brookfield use a transfer station versus private haulage. And maybe we should just get out of the business of transfer station. Anybody have a? Did anybody have that number? We've got about six hundred users. Microphone. Yeah, microphone. We have about six hundred users. So that would reflect less than half the households. Right. Right. 
Well, I, I just, I'm just putting the question out there. I have a private hauler, and yeah. I'll let, we're the only town around that has a transfer station. Well, actually, that's not entirely accurate, Bruce. So North Brookfield has a transfer station. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay. They do. Um, and and that 600 people, I know, I don't know this last mailing, but the last time I did a, a town warrant mailing out, it was 900 households. So two thirds of the town, presumably, um, is utilizing the transfer station. Well, I'm just I'm just putting it out there as this cost rises to this town. Well, when I first moved to town, actually the stickers were more than what we're moving it to. When I first moved to town, I think it was over $100, and it got cut to $85 back about four or five years ago. Um, wasn't it? Ten years ago. Wow, it's been that long. Hot time flies. It actually went down, though, at one point, because when I first came, 25 yeah, or something like that. So I think we're trying to find a balance right now, and predominantly what's driving this because I questioned it myself because I'm a big believer that we should have been raising bag prices or checking what we were sending in the bulk. Yep. But what's driving the predominance of the cost increase at the transfer station currently is that we're no longer getting paid or getting our recyclables hauled for free. That cost is going up. Agreed. So uh, considering the shift in those costs, the $10 fee that still doesn't get us up to the 2010 sticker fee is, is still a pretty good deal. For well, you know, my main reason for not using the town transfer station, one, you can't buy your bags at the transfer station, you can't buy them in the town hall. Very inconvenient. Bruce, we can buy the bags at the transfer station. Yeah. Well, you don't have a sticker. <laughs> Al, every year, uh, Jim at the, that runs uh, the day-to-day -day at the uh, transfer station asks the assessors to put together a list of all of the houses in town. And then they use that to cross-reference so when people sign up. The way I believe, and Mike can clarify this, it's not households, it's every apartment is supposed to have their own sticker as well. Is that correct, Mike? Uh, I think you might want to check with your man down there because that's not the way it runs at all. And I feel it should be households is an apartment, not a four, built four apartment building. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of Article 28, raising the sticker price of $10, please signify raising your card. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 29, to vote to transfer a sum of money from the Water Department Vehicle Purchase Account to the Water Department Main maintenance improvement account. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer $8,731.42 from, from the Water Department Vehicle Purchase Account to the Water Department Water Main Maintenance Improvement Account. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor, please signify raising your cards. And opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Article 30. Uh, see if the town will vote to transfer a, the balance of remaining and the following funds to the general stabilization fund. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the following sums of money previously appropriated at prior annual town meetings to the general stabilization fund. Fund 052, Clean Energy <laughs> Choice, $7,000, remaining balance from fiscal year 15 annual town meeting, Article 19. And fund 270 clean energy grant $1,400.45 remaining balance from fiscal year 11 annual town meeting article 25. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of article 30 please signify by raising your vote. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 31 to see the town vote to accept the town of Brookfield capital uh, 
capital plan, capital policies. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Ms. I move that the town accept the town of Brookfield capital plan, capital policies, and capital goals for fiscal year 2021 through 2025. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter O'Connell, and I'm chairman of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, I'll be very brief, given uh, the, the length of this meeting. Um, this is really the first capital plan presented to the town meeting in many, many years. Uh, a capital plan is an essential document in getting our town's finances together. It will be an important document once we get our audits done, get our free cash back again, uh, and then prepare ourselves uh, to get a bond rating for the town. Uh, we do not have a bond rating, and as Laurie indicated earlier, uh, we won't have a bond rating until we get our audits complete for two years and, uh, and decide to go forward for a bond rating to be able then to qualify in a more guaranteed way to have access to, to um, borrowed money. When you think of a capital plan, just think of, think of um, it's, a, it's a five year financial strategy for maintaining all the town roads, major equipment, buildings such as the town hall, the highway barn, schools, police station, library, cemetery, any asset that's, that's valued at $10,000 or more and lasts three years. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an inventory of everything that we own. The idea of the capital plan is that we need to maintain what we have. And we, in order to do that, we need to do a plan so that we are uh, anticipating the costs coming at us. You might think of our physical assets as the essential structure of our town. They are what builds our sense of community, our sense of pride, whether it be the playground that we are trying to renovate and, and uh, bring up to speed, or it's a town hall that we once had to, uh, to fully use and, and have our town meetings in. The capital plan in your warrant book, and you can just turn the page from where you've been, and you will see the capital plan, uh, identifies several capital improvements that were made in this past year, primarily with grants. We are almost entirely dependent on grants uh, for our capital improvements. But it also identifies key people uh, who have been involved in these projects in the past year and who uh, I think deserve a special recognition. So in our capital plan, we have tried to identify some of those people, including Al Jones, who you've heard from here tonight, who's played a significant role in really uh, assessing our properties fairly and fully and increasing the amount of new growth that we have every year, which improves our uh, financial position. So I do want to thank, again, all of those people, the Recreation Committee, our, our staff who, who've been involved in uh, getting grants and seeking grants, including Kathy LaRocca, which is a relatively new position, and one I'm glad to see that we've added ours to in the budget this year. So if you would, give a, a round of applause to those people named here in the book and to all of those people uh, who, have, who have done so much to, uh, to bring our capital plan forward this year. One of the uh, jobs of the Capital Planning Committee, uh, however, is also to, to give notice to the town of certain trends and issues that face us. So this Capital Plan not only looks ahead and proposes projects for the next five years, um, it also identifies several key issues. One of which is that we are not generating enough free cash each year. And as a result of that, our financial reserves are too low, 
Our finances, as you've heard earlier, prevent us from borrowing to implement major projects. And we are falling behind in funding the essential capital needs of the town. Not everywhere, but in certain key areas. Uh, <clears throat> for this town meeting to go well, $200,000 of capital requests were deferred. We have not put them before you because we were worried about getting the town meeting done tonight in one meeting. So most of those capital needs of the town have been put off to a fall special town meeting. We tend to do this every year. If we don't have enough money in the operating budget, we don't pass the capital needs of the town. We keep deferring projects further and further. So we have $200,000 of deferred capital that if we don't fund in the fall, we're gonna to have to fund next year. So we keep doing that. Just think, for example, in the fire department, we have a 32-year-old fire truck that doesn't meet code anymore, but we cannot borrow the money to replace that truck until we get our finances in order. We have a town hall that we've made some progress on, but we really need to build an elevator there sometime in the next five years. We have to approve the money to either build an elevator there or we lose the variance that the Town Hall Improvement Committee achieved this past year. Uh, I, I see my, my hook uh, coming out here. Let me just simply say that we have a number of key issues that we have to face coming up in the next five years. We promised that we would pay ourselves back from the $225,000 we used last year from stabilization to fund the budget. But we're not doing that yet this year. We need to build our reserves. Um, Peter, if you could, we've got just 30 seconds left on your two minutes. Very good. So I just want to simply say to you that in this capital plan, uh, I commend you to read it and to look at the schedule of projects that are coming up in the next five years and prepare to think carefully about what we will do in the fall town meeting to begin to address the capital needs of the town that we have deferred and deferred and deferred, primarily because we have not had free cash. And when we do have free cash, we tend to use it to balance the budget rather than reserving it for our reserves or to pay for our capital projects. Uh, so I do appreciate your attention to this and I ask you to support just simply accepting this capital plan uh, that we can move forward. Thank you. So a motion has been made. Okay. Pat? Matthew Graves, Lane 23. Um, two things I think are missing from the capital improvement plan. One is the one of the furnaces at the fire station, which at a previous town meeting I questioned. We did an energy efficiency upgrade. All the furnaces in the fire station were supposed to be changed over to natural gas. One of them was not. That's still oil. And I believe the library also has an oil furnace that should be upgraded as well. Mr. Holcraft? Um, just, um, I would like to ask Laurie, I asked the question earlier, um, did you talk about the free cash for capital improvements? Laurie, did we lose any free cash because of our finances not being in order? Wasn't there one year something happened? Did you ask if we lost the free cash because of the finances? Yeah, we didn't file on time or something. Did we, did we lose any free cash in the last couple of years? Two, three years. Um, so based on what I reconciled, you guys have a past history of filing your balance sheet, which is what generates your free cash every other year. Um, so I filed in fiscal year 19. Um, which basically comprised of fiscal year 18 and 19 together. The last time you had filed was fiscal year 17 and you had skipped fiscal year 16. Um, when I did the reconciliation, I 
for fiscal year 19, I filed for quite a bit of um, unused funds. However, you were subtracted $600,000 worth of deficits and um, issues from fiscal year 19. In fiscal year 17, the last time you filed, I believe you got around $400,000 when I got here in the beginning of fiscal year, last May, I got here at the beginning of fiscal year 20, um, I notified the DOR as well as my boss did um, that your fiscal year 17 balance sheet was submitted incorrectly. So you did receive $400,000, however, that you should not have. So you didn't lose from not filing, you lost because you have a lot of errors in your finances. Okay. So we didn't actually you lose any any money just just on paper. You're saying. So you yeah no you physically you, there's no money missing. You just have a big mess that needs to be sorted out. So out of the six hundred thousand dollars that they deducted from your free cash when I filed in May for fiscal year nineteen, I'm working through all of those issues right now. Um, I have a spreadsheet. I'm willing to share it with whomever would like to see it. Um, it, I consider it public information of everything that you were deducted for, why you were deducted for it, and what I'm doing to fix it, and what my timeline is on when it should be fixed. The biggest items were the lack of a cash book from the treasurer's office. Um, that, that's missing. Um, so that, that's where your free cash went, basically. Okay. All right, it's a mess. All right, thank you. I hope you get it straightened out for us, Lori. Thank you. I know oh, you're well. doing a good job. All right, so uh, we have a motion and a second uh, on Article 31. All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. And opposed, the motion passes. That is the last article. We have a motion to adjourn. Can we have a second? All, all in favor, please raise your card. Motion passes, thank you.